I welcome you to Central Moments today. I want to thank my friend and associate, Pastor Don Tucker, for walking us through some of the resurrection events in Jesus' life last week. And now today, as we continue on, uh, we, we are going to look at a moment, in fact, all week, we're going to be looking at, at, at Jesus giving us our job assignment after he ascends into heaven. Uh, as you know, from the time he rose from the dead till he ascended into heaven, there was a period of 40 days. That 40 is a very important number in scripture. It's a, it, it's a full season. It's a full circle word. Like the full circle of some purpose is, in, is embodied uh, in, that, in that number 40. And so Jesus has been appearing to his disciples. Now, just before he goes, he's going to do an amazing thing here in Matthew. He's going to link his authority with our obedience. And it, it begins here in verse 16 of the last chapter of Matthew. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So we're going to get to our job assignment, but I want you to know, you, you may be in the class of those who, who you know, you believe, but, but you struggle with your unbelief. And I, I just want to say that what Jesus is about to invite us into... Um, at least the first step, the open door, is for all of us. Here there were believers and here there were doubters. And Jesus is going to declare this to all of them. Next verse. Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, Jesus is called the Alpha, Greek for A, and the Omega, that's the last letter of the Greek al alphabet. We would say he's the A to Z. He's the beginning and the end. And he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now, why? Because he died in our place. He defeated Satan's power at the cross. He shed his blood for our sin. He rose from the dead. He conquered even death. Now, all authority has been given to him. And if you had all authority in heaven and earth given to you, and you're about to say one of the last things you're going to say to your friend before you left, what would you say? Well, Jesus, of course, sets us on his mission. Therefore, he said, in light of the fact all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth, therefore go and make disciples. L literally, the Greek would read, going, make disciples. This is our commission, make disciples. Uh, who do we make disciples of? Well, this is a global call. This goes all the way from your home to the ends of the earth. Go and make disciples of all nation groups. In the Greek, of all ethne, of all people groups. Baptizing them, so going, make disciples. And uh, that's going to require two things. Which are a blueprint for our own discipleship. First of all, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In other words, um, Bring people to the place where they publicly identify with Jesus as their Lord and Savior through baptism. And then teaching. So baptizing and teaching. Uh, teaching them to obey. Te teaching them to follow in my steps. To obey what I've told them to do. And, um, and surely, he said, and here's his promise, surely I am with you to the very end of the age. So this is what we call the Great Commission. There are some studies that have been done in the evangelical church recently in America that's, that are indicating that less than 50% of members of evangelical churches even know what the Great Commission is. And yet these are Jesus' final marching orders to us. And uh, I've, I've made sure that the church I pastor knows what the Great Commission is all about because this is what Jesus is doing. He's connecting his authority with our obedience. All authority is given to me in heaven and earth, he said. Therefore, going, make disciples. By going, make disciples. By going to lost people. By going even to the ends of the earth, make disciples. That's the Great Commission. And this is why we exist. The great missionary pastor uh, from People's Church in Toronto, Oswald J. Sanders, in his uh, amazing little book, The Cry of the World, he writes this, We should have kept before us our Lord's post-resurrection commands. We should have evangelized the world. That's the Great Commission. Otherwise, we have no ground for our existence as a church. There is no reason why we should have churches unless they are reaching out to those who have never heard. So Jesus links his authority in heaven and earth with our obedience to take his message to our world. Another way of putting that, 
is that he links his power with our purpose. That's our purpose, to go and make disciples. So would you pray with me? Our Father, we thank you that you've given us something to do till the day you come again. We thank you for, for, for the many missionaries, Lord, that, that many of us support financially every month and pray for. My God, we thank you for, for young people that are, and children that are growing up in our churches. Are you going to put a call on their lives to go to the whole world and preach the gospel? And we thank you for, for our part in that, even today, uh, as, as, as we realize that you've left us w- w- with an amazing mandate to go and to, to help people find Christ and learn how to follow you. And I pray that right where we live, that will be the case this week and as well as around the world. We thank you for authority given to you and we thank you for that. Therefore, therefore, going, we should make disciples. God, just partner your authority and power with our purpose and our obedience, we pray today in Jesus' name. Amen.